Okay, this is one of the new levels. Evil Hack takes, um, it has the vanilla versions, but it also has a, uh, it takes the ones from uh, Slashem and Unnet Hack. So I am shameless gonna, shamelessly going to look this up on the wiki. I was in the, on this very level the other day, and it's mostly pretty easy, but I made one mistake, and it was pretty annoying, so... Um, I just don't want that to happen. Alrighty. Um, so I'm good so far, and then... Bup, bup. Killed the green mold from afar. I'm acid resistant from my smock, actually. So I didn't want to do that. No, it was rotten anyway. Um, we only got one scroll of earth. It's sadly common. Uh, and then, how does this go? Um, G goes down twice. Nope. Ooh, the Akrata. Horn time for sure. Definitely. Still scared. I can backstab it to death. There we go. Perhaps a bit rash, but I didn't want to leave it until it became unscared again. Okay, yeah, I got it from here. Um, some of the new levels have lava on them, which is pretty convenient because since you spend so much time on the floor solving the puzzle. Getting zombies is pretty common, um, and if you toss them into the lava when you kill them, then the corpses burn up and they won't revive. Um, um, yeah, so that's nice. Gotta be careful not to push boulders into it, though. I think there might be one extra, but... Folders if you don't have to. I'm in a weird spot where half the time I feel like I'm invincible and then the other half I feel like I'm gonna die immediately. And then get to the tooled horn mostly. That thing is OP. Got a python, those are pretty scary. I think they got some sort of grabby attack, so I don't I might not be able to run away if they get close to me. Of course, my kitten is interfering. I really need to lose that thing. Really cramping my vibe. Take out my other daggers. I guess I should switch those to something else. It just spontaneously generated. Yeah, Python Corpse is still there. For a second I wondered if something had zapped on dead turning for some unfathomable reason. I don't know where it would have come from, but... Uh, whistle the kitten out of the way. It's possible if I throw too many daggers they might land in lava, but... It would have to be just the right amount of strength for me to do that. Seems unlikely. I don't know. Why risk it, right? Okay, and then I'm gonna eat these pythons, of course. So, come on, following through on the food. And yeah, goblins are orcs too, so they um, they get hurt by mithril. Hmm, just a kitten. I could toss the corpse to the kitten to make it telepathic. I guess if it's going to be hanging around with me in Sokoban, I'd like to know where it is. Um, and it's not like I need nutrition that bad anymore. Oh, didn't get telepathy anyway. Just a baby crocodile, not too bad. Yeah, okay. How far is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I guess I'm at seven squares for now. 
good to know. So, Sokoban is, I don't know, it feels like a pretty similar experience to vanilla overall. All of the very, uh, the possible floors are on the net equity key. So you can look them up, you don't have to try to solve them yourself for a cheat. Um, prodigiously to get them done. Uh, so yeah, it's mostly just the same old boulder pushing. Um, the final floor in the whole prize situation is a bit different though. So instead of just having the two options, bag of holding or reflection, mindless, probably hostile then. I want to see if it'll move anyway. Um, instead of just having those two options, uh, oh, shouldn't have fired my elven daggers at him. They didn't burn, luckily. Um, there are three different doors that each can hold one of two different prizes, 50% chance of each. So there's an amulet prize, um, there's which is either reflection or magic resistance. Um, and I don't think magic resistance is a net hack, is it? Vanilla net hack, is it? But it's an amulet that just grants magic resistance. That's all there is to it. Um, and then there's a tool prize, which is either a bag of holding, like normal, or it can also be a magic marker, which is better find than in vanilla, because they no longer randomly generate. Um, the only guaranteed one is down in the sanctum, at which point, like, you can't really use it for preparations. Um, I actually haven't brought up the wiki page for this one. I'm going purely off memory, but I haven't done this particular floor in ages. So, kind of a risk. I think I've got it right, though. Um, Anyway, so magic marker is nice if you can get it, and I already but I already have a bag of folding, and I don't know, I'm not a wizard or so. Magic markers are slightly less useful, plus I can always wish for them later. So I'm not going to go for that. Um, then the third possible prize is a uh, armor. So either both of the possible armors are new to Evil Hack. Um, but uh, fundamentally familiar. So you've got Gauntlets of Protection, which is like a cloak of protection except gloves. And you've got a Helm of Speed, which is like boots of speed except a hat. Uh, and yeah, that's all there is to it. There was actually some exciting drama over the Helm of Speed when a new race was introduced, the Turtle. Um, which, despite my username, I actually have not played much. Um, but the turtle um, is really restricted in terms of what armor it can wear. Um, so it, it's it's basically just a humanoid turtle, a large turtle. Um, and it gets extra AC from its shell. But it can only wear soft hats. So it's like elven helms, fedoras. basically it. Um, and Helms of Speed, but that wasn't originally the case. Um, and then it can wear gloves and a shield, I guess, if you're into that. Uh, so Helms of Speed were originally just a metallic helm like all the other magical helmets. Um, but people complained about the fact that half the time if you picked the prize armor as a turtle the prize would be useless, because they couldn't wear a homeless speed. Um, plus it just seemed kind of unfair that all the magical helms, I think maybe part of it was that it seemed unfair that all the magical helms were unavailable for a turtle. But regardless, um, I think it was mostly the Sokoban thing, and it was changed so that uh, helms of speed could generate as soft materials as well as metal. Um, it, it was kind of a, a weird hack, uh, 
and with pretty far-reaching consequences, even though I'm pretty sure it was mostly initiated because of the whole Sokobone thing. So, because it can be made of soft materials now, you can get a dragon speed, dragon skin, or a dragon hide uh, home speed. Um, and dragon hide has massively higher AC than any other materials you can get. So, uh, I'd say most characters will wish for a dragon hide home speed um, as part of their ascension kit because speed is super useful. Um, and AC is super useful, so there's, you know, what's not to like there? I think, I mean, like, uh, Helm of Opposite Alignment also, it's, it's not that useful, except in, uh, specific, uh, niche cases. What else is there? Um, Helm of, uh, ESP is also kind of in a weird place in Evil Hack because um, it's in a weird place because uh, ESP is a property that can generate on any armor um, so uh, I mean you could even get like a normal helm with ESP and it would actually be better than a helm of an actual you know official helm of ESP because a normal helm is lighter, so that's kind of funny. But you can also get like a t-shirt of ESP, and there's no magical t-shirt, so um, the kind of opportunity cost of wearing it is significantly lower. Um, so yeah, helm of ESP, I, I can't imagine why you want one of those um, in the late game if you could go with helm of speed instead. Helm of brilliance, of course, uh, is still an option, and depending on your character you might need it, but Plenty of characters don't need it, so um, Helm of Speed is pretty inarguably the best choice, I'd say, for most characters. Um, some will wish for an oilskin uh, elven helm, cloth elven helm. Um, so oilskin is another object property, and it can only generate on cloth items. So you can't get an oilskin dragon hide elven helm, unfortunately. Um, but it means that mind flayers can eat your brains and zombies can eat your brains, which is helpful because you've got the mind flayer liches around that you can't even genocide until um, you faced a couple of them in Gehenim um, as part of the journey to the Vecna, the monster you need to kill in order to genocide the Elhans. So, uh, and then zombies are just there throughout the game, you know, from the little orc zombies you see at the beginning of the game all the way to giant zombies in Ganem. So, and it's, it would be pretty futile to genocide them all, I think. So, um, brain eating is always a concern, and so some people will go with an oil skin helm to prevent that, uh... I'm gonna use my metal daggers. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm probably gonna go with the amulet. I have intrinsic speed, and I have um, I have gloves, even if they're just leather. And I have fine helm, you know, whatever. Oh, I don't need to bring any more boulders over. Why did I do that? I'm just going to check if there's anything hiding under the boulders. Any items? Oh, the zombies, never mind. Lock them in there. And annotate the level, so I'm not surprised later. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to go with the amulet because I don't feel a particular need. I do have MC1. Maybe I should go for. Maybe I could go for protection if I got it. Plus, I clearly could use the AC. <laughs> I kind of don't want to get these daggers stuck under a boulder, so I'm going to throw them one at a time. Um, I can always just break it with my pickaxe, but... But yeah, I mean, I'll probably go with an amulet. Um, 
I don't have any after that fiasco with the York shopkeeper last time. Um, yeah, that was something. So it was pretty far, hard to find where the uh, where the code was for that actually. It's stuck just in the main move loop. Um, so literally every turn, the game checks to see if you're wearing or wielding any banes. And if you are, all the monsters on the level instantly become angry. It seems kind of like overkill to me. <laughs> I mean, like, if that's the effect you're going for, that's how you do it. But, yeah. Unicorn stays away from me. And I'll just leave it. I don't want to faint next to the unicorn. I don't care about your poison anymore. I'm happy to trade missiles with you. There we go. I don't want to get next to the unicorn because I'm oh, and as I say that I'm pretty squishy. Um, hopefully I can get in the corridor again and gun it down that way. Otherwise, it won't line up with me. Um, this here is a gray fungus. It 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 just sits there. But if you hit it in melee then it'll make you sick. Funnily enough, eating it will not make you sick. I think it's poisonous, but it also grants a little bit of poison resistance. So I'm snatching that thing right up. For a while, I didn't think to check, and so I would just never eat them, because I thought they'd make me sick, but they don't. Oh, come on. Ah. Need, to be here. Need to be pretty careful about this. I really want myself that unicorn horn, so I'm willing to spend some time on this. Eh. Oh wow, that was close. Okay, okay, I'm just I'm gonna back off. I don't want to make another silly mistake and die. But yeah, I really want that unicorn horn so that zombies are less of a concern. And I'm willing to put in some work to make that happen. I don't think I'll reach... Well, I have stronger strength than the last time I tried. I can probably hit the vampire bat. Yep. Oh, I'm wielding my... I'm firing my metal daggers. Um, so... Wood normally... Um, is bad for edged weapons. You get like a minus one um, damage for a wooden bladed weapon, but, uh, and all elven stuff is made of wood by default, so you'd think their weapons would be bad. But it's assumed that, um, elves have mystical knowledge of wood or whatever, so, uh, elven weapons don't get the penalty. Um, and just like in vanilla, they have slightly better damage for the most part. So, you know, elven daggers are 1d5, 1d3, instead of 1d4, 1d3 for a normal dagger. Um, there's also elven longswords, which are basically just wooden katanas, <laughs> um, except they generate on lots of elves. So katanas are, I mean, they're still something to get excited about, but not nearly as rare a find. Uh, more daggers, always more daggers. Um, so yeah, um, they're made of wood, they're light, they do the same damage as a katana, you know what's not to love. So, oven long swords are cool. Um, what else? Oh, somebody killed the unicorn, when did that happen? I can try to eat its corpse. 
and then if it makes me sick, I can use its own horn to cure me. That's delightfully twisted. Of course, with my food sense intrinsic, I can just not eat the corpse also if it would make me sick. Wow, that's like half health tops. I don't think I have any acid on me. Come on, give me some multi-shot. I don't, um, all the elementals can engulf you and do, like, appropriate damage. Ugh. Speak of the devil. Not anything good. How much damage do they do per engulf? Um, anyway, so they're all really scary. Probably water elementals are the worst, because they can drown you. Um, so if you don't have magical breathing. 46, ugh. Um, it's a pretty decent chance of killing me. But I don't know... What's, wait, what's their magic distance? Pretty high. I'm gonna try my horn anyway. That didn't really do anything. Oh, I just killed it immediately. Anticlimactic. Uh... It was at pretty high health. It was like 20 something. That was pretty high damage. I spit in the face of danger. Um, okay, cool. Unicorn horn acquired. And actually, I'm not going to put more stuff in my bag of holding. I'm just going to drop it all here. Mm -hmm. Um, one kind of downside of the whole, uh, object material thing is that you can get weapon, uh, you can get anything made of gold, and leprechauns will steal it, even if it's not gold pieces. So, I mean, you, um, if, like, gold ring is free action, that's not a good time. <laughs> um, like, I mean, leprechauns don't generally spawn in the end game, but all you need is one. Um, and there's a monster called the Shambling Horror, which will generate random with random attacks, and one of them can be steel gold. So you can end up with something that's like super. F so the Shambling Horror is like it has all randomized stats. Um, so you could end up with something that run away. Okay. Um, is really fast but difficult to hit and. Um, like, can see invisible and all sorts of scary stuff, and on top of it, it'll steal all your stuff. Yeah, I think they have a nor normal stealing attack, too, but... Um, anyway, maybe it can't, I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, there's a particular insult to injury when it spawns with a gold attack. It just feels like it's out to get you. Ravens are pretty tough. I wonder... I can't remember if there's a hit penalty for being blind. I can't imagine there wouldn't be. Um, this is another new level. Uh, I have fun memories of this one. <laughs> um, it's actually not too bad as they go. It's just pretty complicated, so... I'm definitely looking at the wiki for this one. Um, yeah. I mean, it has that certain puzzly elegance, but I'm not in that hack for the puzzly elegance. <laughs> uh, and of course, there's a monster right there. That was probably just my cat. Doot, doot. Careful, careful. To the right, and then move this one down over there. Oh, and I've already screwed it up. That's fine. I'm gonna have to drop all my stuff. Can I squeeze through? I can't get through with my armor. Um, I'm not actually sure how I'll get back. 
is. I don't think I can go diagonally. I need to squeeze into a boulder spot. This is tanking my luck, but I think I have to do it multiple times. Oh, I can't even... This will probably break things that I'll have to fix later, but I think that's my only option there. I don't know. That could have gone better. Uh, yeah, that's one reason I like to do Sokovan before mine Zen, because then I don't have to worry about my luck stone causing my luck not to turn out. I mean, I can always put it in a bag, but... Um, Seeing that other lizard reminded me that I have a lizard corpse on me. I'm gonna want that in open inventory just in case. And then put on all my stuff again. There we go. Okay, what's next? What's next? Um, we've got to move <laughs> this one down. This one even more down. Starting to look familiar. Uh, yeah, okay. We're not out of the woods yet. There's still like two more difficult things, I think. Like with some levels, you just need help with the first two or three boulders, and then from there it's super obvious. But this is one of those floors where you keep on having to refer back to the solution. At least if you're me and not good at solving them puzzles. Um, also, if you don't pay attention and you push a boulder too far this way, that can screw you up. Um, there, yes. Yeah, so some fl floors are kind of idiot-proof in that you can't push boulders too far because, like, the walls are in the way or whatever. This one, unfortunately, is not idiot-proof, which is of particular relevance to me. Let's just leave it at that. And of course, there's zombies on the level too. How fun. I think it's probably in the zoo. Oh, there isn't a zoo yet. Probably in the main, um, the main room, which is fine. I can just dagger them down from there. There's long as they stay out of the way until I'm finished doing my boulders, I'll be happy. I didn't try to fire a dagger at it. Well, of course, my kitten has no chance of killing it because it has high AC from its shell. And there's every chance it'll wander over and start blocking my boulders and stuff. So I'm not excited about that. Arguably worse than a zombie. Okay, let's see. Actually, this might not be the... It might actually not affect my soul from here. Might make it easier that I cheated. Um, I'm just gonna run back down and grab the gnome corpse real quick. Oh my gosh! My kitten did take down the turtle. Should I be worried? Oh, I shouldn't have kept eating. But I can't really do much about it. Oh, it trained me at what level? Okay. Oh, and it left me a corpse too. I'm gonna eat that before it turns rotten. Alright. Broke even. I'll take it. Um, especially in Evil Hack where there's like actually legitimately scary monsters at high levels. Um, you really want to try to keep your level low. Uh, so I'm not broken up about the fact that I lost a level there. I am broken about, up about the fact that I'm about to die. 
What's their speed? Spitting acid won't matter because I have a alchemy smock on, but it's basically as fast as I am, so retreating won't really help. Um, 71 over 12 is, yeah, it's under 6, so I can't pray for help yet either. Um, what was its physical attack? I think it was 2d6. Yeah. It's not probably not going to kill me then. Let's see if I can get it to fight my kitten a little. Alright, some space. Okay. Yeah, it was at low health, so I just needed some a little breathing room. all the way up to poison resistant, fully pulled to poison resistant, but I'm getting there. Um, found myself a bone lock pick, that's nice. It's lighter than a normal one. Um, lock picks, as you'd expect, are made of metal. Uh, keys are actually by default made of bone, which is a bit odd. I don't know. Maybe there's historical precedent. I'm not a history person. Uh, but... Um, that means that, like, you can get find yourself with a, with a, like, steel key, and it'll be, like, nine units of weight, and you'll wonder why it's so heavy compared to a, um... compared to a key... or compared to a lockpick, and the reason is because by default is made of bone, which is really light, so anything made of, any keys made of metal are going to be heavy in comparison. In general, I really like the object materials deal, but, um, okay, this is a zombie. I'm going to eat it, and I'll get sick, and then I'll unicorn my horn myself, and it'll be lovely. Boom! Zombie disposed of. Um, anyway, I'm a big fan of the object materials, but, um, the whole issue with having to adjust weights for default materials can lead to sometimes to some slightly unintuitive with results. One time I got a spell book that was only uh, 13 units in weight, um, and that's, you know, ridiculously light. In, uh, in vanilla, they're all like 45 or 50 units, right? Um, in Evil hack level one spellbooks are 35, and then for each additional level, they're five units heavier, um, which is nice for identifying them, and also usually nice for carrying them around, because you're probably not carrying around level spell seven spellbooks a lot. So it's usually, usually you end up with a lighter weight than you would in vanilla. Um, but yeah, so 13 shouldn't happen. Or, no, it wouldn't have been 13. But it was... It was... No, yeah, it was 13, that's it. Okay, so, um... The reason it happened... So it was gifted to me by my god. Um, and... I mean, I, I never looked into it too closely, but the, the, pr presumably what happened was when you generate a god gift, it's made of... I, I guess they, like, have it so that spellbooks are made of paper. And you'd think that wouldn't be a big deal, right? Um, because of course spellbooks are made of paper, so assuming that shouldn't be an issue. Um, but the thing is, K2, in an amusing nod to actual reality, um, made it so that parchment and vellum spellbooks are made out of leather, because that's what parchment and vellum are. Um, and leather is three times as heavy as paper. So w when like the game starts, things are jiggered around so that uh, so that whatever spell books happen to be leather um, they they still end up being the proper weight of in this case 40 for a level 2 spell book um, but that means that if for some reason one gets generated as paper which should never happen but did in this particular corner case 
um, they'll be lighter than they should be. Anyway, so I just told myself it was like an abridged version. Detect monsters for dummies. I died pretty soon after anyway, so clearly it was um, it was called for. My God knew it was up. Most of my funny stories end with I died soon after. That's an unfortunate fact. Um, I actually have a funny Sokoban story that goes that way too. Uh, so, I don't know if I explained this clearly before, actually. Oh, I shouldn't have killed the bat, it was neutral. Hmm. Oh well. And eat the bat, because I can cure stun. And eat the human, because I can cure sickness. Hmm. So, I don't know if I explained this clearly, but... So the three prizes, they sp each spawn in one of these doors. And um, when you pick one up, all the others vanish. Specifically, all of the other items on the level, all of the other Sokoban prizes on the level vanish. Um, I assume it would be difficult to code so that all the Sokoban prizes anywhere vanished, but I don't really know. Anyway, you know, it's it's a reasonable assumption that the Sokoban prizes stay on the level, right? Because once you pick up one, the others vanish, so it's not like you can carry one downstairs and then come up for another. Um, of course, you could get a monster, you know, maybe you could get a pet to pick one up. Um, or even a hostile monster to pick one up if you somehow, you know, manage to get it to ignore the Elberth and scare monster in the closets. But, I mean, K2's no dummy. He thought of this um, and made sure that monsters couldn't pick up the Sogobon prizes. Um, and, uh, you know, made, made, made all sorts of checks to make sure that nothing weird would happen. Um, but, of course, NetHack being NetHack, there's always something weird that can happen. Um, and I was the lucky person to run into the one, this particular weird thing. Uh, and that is that... Um, uh, gelatinous cubes will swallow items just like vanilla. Um, I can't remember if in vanilla they like all uh, dissolve or what exactly happened. I don't remember. Either way, certainly an evil hack. Um, inorganic materials will just end up in the gelatinous cubes inventory instead of being destroyed. Um, and so yeah, digestion does not count as picking up an item, so it wasn't checked. Uh, and I think there was even some code that stopped monsters from, like, going through trapdoors or something if they were carrying things, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Either way, it didn't work for gelatinous cubes, whatever checks were in place. So, one time in Sokoban, a gelatinous cube ate um, one of the prizes and then fell down a hole to a different level. Um, which, you know, is pretty rare, because normally you've filled all the holes by the time you get to the zoo. Um, and normally you don't have a gelatinous cube, and normally it doesn't eat one of the prizes. But just, there is a particularly... And I, I mean, like, I wasn't trying to look for an exploit or something, although I kind of wish I was, that would have been awesome. Um, but this, you know, the stars aligned, and I ended up um, getting two Sokoban prizes. So, because I picked one up on the original level, the other one disappeared. And then the way that that works is that like it's a special it, like has a special flag that is the Sp Sokoban prize, but then once you pick one up and the others disappear, it loses that flag and just becomes a normal item or something to that effect. So once I picked up the fr the first item on the fourth floor, um, it stopped being a Sokoban prize. So then when I went downstairs and killed the cube and picked up the second prize, it, it didn't see any other prizes to destroy which was pretty funny. But then, yeah, I died soon after. Typically. Typical. Um, I apologize for not being particularly... Um, I'm not moving particularly fastly as I talk. This actually requires a small amount of focus, unlike my normal play. Um, 
which is entirely thoughtless. Uh, but yeah, the this is one of those another one of those uh, floors where you gotta be careful in the setup, or you mess or you'll mess everything up and have to deal with that. Um, Yeah, this one's pretty idiot-proof, actually. Um, it's reasonably difficult to get uh, It's reasonably difficult to push a board, bo uh, boulder into a place where you can't move it anymore. Um, so like up here, you, you might push it one more square, but then you can always push it back later. And until then, it can kind of serve as a backstop um, to make sure you don't do the same thing with other boulders. Uh, I might do that later, but right now I don't want to mess around with the tried and true solution, so. Yeah, from here it's not too bad. Peaceful snake? No. Oh, right, I'm a female, so they won't be peaceful. Um, oh, I don't want to move this one yet. What am I thinking? Or I do, but not in that direction. Anyway, um, let's see what's in the zoo right now. We've got ourselves a stalker. Two stalkers, which is less exciting than it sounds, because permanency and visibility, you can't get it from eating stalkers anymore. Or is it invisibility that you can get by eating stalkers while invisible? Either way, you can't get that by eating stalkers anymore either. So at best, I can be invisible for a little while, and then I'll stop it being invisible again. Um, Gnomish Wizard. Let's see if that's peaceful or not. Not peaceful. Good to know. Any peaceful monsters? The Hobbit. I don't tend to play neutral characters, so I keep being surprised when animals are peaceful to me. Like that bat downstairs. But it seems like all the ones up here are hostile. Except the unicorn, who I certainly don't want to anger. Um, a greased pickaxe. That's... it's a choice. Clearly not one that panned out for him, but... It feels really weird that in that hack where you have all these interactions, greased gloves and weapons don't actually cause you any problems. Okay, this bat is a mean one. Maybe it saw what I did to its cousin. Sorry, little bat. You know how it is sometimes. Okay, the bat hit squad has been taken care of. We got ourselves a mimic here. Um... I don't want to like lose a bunch of my daggers down the holes, but I don't really have anything. Yeah, I can just like grab a greased pickaxe and hurl it at the mimic. Um, and I want to stay far away from the sticky grasp of the giant mimic. Luckily, my cat has moved. Maybe we're finally becoming a team. I'm sure my cat will die soon after I say that. I'm taking a lot of ammunition. I said when I started this game that I thought hobbits would make good roll, good rogues, and I'm starting to rethink that a little bit. Oh, the darts of fire, that's cool. Oh, that one didn't survive. Well, now I know. I'm going to put them in my bag for now. I don't really need them. Uh, I'm starting to reconsider. Because with the I'm at my strength cap right now. Um, and I'm doing considerably less damage than like a human. Oh, there was a hole there. What was, oh, that was the pickaxe anyway. I don't need it. The monstrosity that is the Greased Pickaxe will never see the light of day again. 
I'm burying that thing deep. I've got to wonder how my hobbit knows what a seal sounds like. Like, presumably it's lived in a little hobbit hole. She's lived in a little hobbit hole with her whole life. They're not renowned for being seafaring creatures. And she has now crawled into an even deeper hole. Um, which again is not particularly conducive to learning about the um, the oral habits of aquatic creatures. I'm pretty sure the lower one's fleeing. But maybe, maybe the education system is just really good. Who knows? Those were some pretty scary ogres. I wonder if they had enchanted clubs or something. Probably it was just bad holes. Um, sometimes I wish I could see what the dice rolls are for various things. Because I feel like a lot of time when you depend, you, you depend on the fact that rolls will mostly be average. Uh, and then whenever they don't go average, you find yourself really surprised. And I imagine good players are more in tune with how wrong things can go and we'll take precautions appropriately. Like for instance, that time that I don't quite kill the 8 HP 8. Oh, I don't need the spear. Oh, jumping spiders. I've got to be close to full intrinsic poison resistance by now. Still not quite there yet. At least there's plenty of corpses to eat. I haven't been hungry in a while. Not that my constitution's actually gone up by much. One point since that rabid dog incident. Oh, it's a, he has a stone club. That would do it. Stone does two extra damage, I believe. Um, for blunt weapons, which is totally intuitive. Also slashing weapons, um, the reasoning being that stone's really heavy, so you can get a lot of momentum behind a sword and really mess up your opponent, which makes sense, but is not, you know, the immediate trope or whatever that you'd associate with edged weapons. And I don't have any boulders up there blocking my way. Because of the long hallway here, I've been known to like bring a boulder up to this area, up here, and then due to monsters or other concerns, I'll go back down and forget that I brought a boulder up. And then without checking, I'll bring another boulder up and then I'll get stuck and I'll have to break one. Luckily there's a number of extra spare boulders in this level, so that's not, that's never a game ender. I mean, you've always got the scroll of earth, if you really need it. Um, I'm just gonna... Oh, it's a centaur that was shooting at me. I'm gonna see if I can bait out more of the arrows, maybe. Um, because it's... the centaurs are at least large. It's always hard to talk about size because large and small are like actual sizes that monsters can be and are distinct from large and small, which are groups of sizes that monsters can be, which are again distinct from large and small as, you know, hand wavy terms that we use as humans to describe uh, stuff imprecisely. But anyway, centaurs are bigger than I am, so they can't get, can't get past the uh, diagonal boulders. So, I mean, I'm sure once it gets into melee range, it'll mess me up. But I'm hoping that I can at least get it to spend all its arrows first. And I believe it has. 
actually didn't have many of them. Um, how does this go? Yeah. I'm not looking at the solution for this one, but I think you have to start with that one because otherwise I don't think you can go too far. I have to leave it there, I think. But that's okay. Um, anyway, you need to move that boulder so you can get around here when you maneuver these boulders down. But yeah, you see this way I can just mindlessly push up and I don't have to worry in two directions even. Yeah. Um, and I don't have to worry about pushing the boulders too far. I mean, I already have, so it's done now. Um, because I have a unicorn horn now, I could just eat the elf and deal with the sickness. But then it won't give me its sweet, sweet 8% sleep resistance. Um, I don't know if this is just kind of an anecdotal feeling of mine, but I always feel like sleep resistance is the last thing I get. Um, and so I try to eat as many elves as I can. I'm pretty obsessed with elf eating. Um, okay. We're only like halfway through a level. This just has so many holes. My patter is faltering. Plus, this video is getting pretty long. So, there's that. What are we at? An hour 40. Okay, this is definitely going to be two videos. Um, that'll probably sound odd when it is actually two videos. Maybe I'll record some sort of introduction later for the third one. But, yeah, I'm kind of worried about my poor video editor, which is just shoddy free software. Oh, Centaur still has errors, apparently. Um, I recently updated it. It was freezing a lot whenever I tried to do anything with a video on it, even just our videos. But I updated it, and it was working better. I don't know how to feel about two-hour videos yet, though, because I haven't dared to try... Mimic. I thought I'd cleared up that boulder. I'm... I feel like there's gotta be extra mimics that spawn in Sokoban. Like, it's not like you see them every day in the normal dungeon, but you always get a couple on the Sokoban level. I mean, it would make sense. They're, they're definitely, they're hands down the most interesting part of Sokoban. I think. Um... Maybe if you're a hardcore puzzle solver, you'll actually enjoy doing these puzzles, but even then I'd think you'd like close to memorize them pretty quickly. Alright, we're down to the last three. Um, I'm probably going to have to refer back to the wiki for this one, or can I remember? Let's see. you got to push this one here because this one has to go up. Oh, and the centaur's there too. Plus a glass piercer. Yeah. Which won't move. Fun. I don't want to waste all my daggers and then not have any left for the centaur. Well, I'm at full health and my kitten's beside me. Um, that's as good as I'm going to get. Of course, the centaur is just waiting in the wings. Okay, I'm going to let it throw my daggers back. Um, I can always rest off the damage, plus I'm sure I do more damage with daggers than it does. Probably. Okay, one more dagger. There we go. Thank you very much, centaur. Um, drop my other steel arrow. I 
I'm glad I have a stethoscope because now I know what gender my cat is. I mean, I guess it's pretty realistic that you wouldn't know just to look at it necessarily, whether it's a male or female cat, but um, it's always a pain. I'm like, call it an it, which is about in keeping with my level of emotional attachment to it, but um, still sounds a bit odd to me. Well, that was a legendary rivalry, and we never even saw each other. How exciting. Plus, I get a bonus corpse. It's nice. I feel like giant beetles leave corpses way more than they should. Yeah, it's not that big. <laughs> Wait, 10. Oh, I should stop now. I think my recording will get screwed up with low battery. So for now, we'll end on a cliffhanger with Terrapin in a daunting matchup with a slightly larger than normal insect. I'm sure you're all on tenterhooks. I hope you tune in next time to see how that turns out. And for now, bye-bye.